Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Gary Campbell. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation. In this video, we'll talk about pathophysiology or really what is uh, dysmenorrhea. We'll talk about some non-pharmacologic methods or remedies that can be used to ease the pain of dysmenorrhea, as well as pharmacologic therapies or medications that can be used in the treatment of dysmenorrhea. Before I get into the video, just keep in mind that this information is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. I've put together some slides to go over this information, so let's just jump right into it. Well, the first thing to discuss here would be the pathophysiology. So dysmenorrhea is defined as painful menstruation. It can be classified as primary or secondary. Primary dysmenorrhea is attributed to uterine contractions with no underlying pathology. Secondary dysmenorrhea is due to pelvic disease such as endometriosis, inflammatory disease, or uterine polyps. In terms of prevalence, the prevalence of dysmenorrhea ranges from 6 to 80%, most commonly noted as 50%. The peak age seems to be between 20 and 24 years old, and incidence decreases with age. About 10% of women will have severe symptoms. Now for some risk factors associated with dysmenorrhea. So patients below the age of 30 years old may experience dysmenorrhea more often, or if they have a BMI less than 20. If a patient has early menarche, less than 12 years of age, they may experience dysmenorrhea. Longer cycles and duration of bleeding. Heavy or irregular menstrual flow. Premenstrual syndrome, or PMS. Pelvic inflammatory disease. Victims of sexual assault, or people who smoke. In terms of non-pharmacologic therapy, some evidence suggests exercise may reduce symptoms. Regular aerobic exercise can also decrease stress, which may be a contributing factor in dysmenorrhea. Certain yoga poses may be beneficial. Decreasing fat intake may relieve some symptoms. Warm baths or heating pads applied to the abdomen may reduce symptoms. Uh, for most women, drug therapy is required in addition to non-pharmacologic strategies. Now for pharmacologic therapies, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs. NSAIDs may alleviate pain associated with dysmenorrhea by decreasing prostaglandin concentrations in endometrial and menstrual fluid. NSAIDs should be taken with food at the onset of pain associated with menses and continued for 72 hours. This is because the peak concentration of prostaglandins occurs in the first 48 hours. NSAIDs should be tried for at least three cycles before they are determined to be a failure for the certain patient. Some patients may use an increased dose or a loading dose for their first dose of NSAIDs when the pain begins. Now for two examples of NSAIDs, so the first one would be ibuprofen, also known as Advil or Motrin. A patient would typically use 200 to 400 milligrams every six to eight hours orally. They would start it at the onset of pain of menses and continue for two to three days. The maximum dose for self-care, or if you pick up the medication on your own without a prescription, would be 1,200 milligrams per day. The usual maximum dose is 2,400 milligrams per day. In terms of side effects, some people may experience dyspepsia or upset stomach, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, headache, or a rash. The next medication is naproxen. So for this medication, the loading dose of 500 milligrams might be used, and then 250 milligrams every six to eight hours, or 500 milligrams twice daily. The maximum daily dose would be 1,250 milligrams per day. And the side effects for naproxen would be the same as ibuprofen. So dyspepsia, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, headache, or a rash. And in terms of NSAIDs, you may also ask your doctor about mefamanic acid or Ponstan. Lastly, here we have hormonal contraceptives. So combination oral contraceptives, or COCs, are often used to treat dysmenorrhea. They reduce the amount of prostaglandins in menstrual fluid by reducing the amount of fluid in general. They also inhibit ovulation, and dysmenorrhea only happens in ovulatory cycles. COCs are up to 90% effective in relieving dysmenorrhea symptoms, and COCs are available by prescription. All right, everybody, that's all we're going to talk about today with dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, and most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. For today, take care.